I hope y'all are ready for my two cents. Hello my besties and welcome to my official guide to the wonderful world of the horror genre. I probably shouldn't be using the word official in any context of this video because that might imply that I think I know what I'm talking about but realistically I'm just getting on here to yap. And there have been a few of you who have asked me to yap about this topic. So here I am. But this is going to be my disclaimer now. I am in no way shape or form asserting myself as a horror expert and quite honestly it is still a genre that i feel like i have so much left to explore so if i say anything in this video and you disagree with me that's fine and it probably will happen but i do feel like i am at least a little bit qualified to speak on this subject because i myself have been a freaky little bitch ever since i could remember i have always loved spooky scary creepy things i love scary movies and even when I was little, I was reading horror books. And I do have the proof. These. These are the books that I was reading in late elementary slash middle school. Mary Downing Hawn. Please tell me that one of you out there knows who this queen is. She is the queen of adolescent middle grade horror books. This woman simultaneously ignited my love for horror while also giving me nightmares. Wait till Helen comes. All the lovely bad ones. The Ghost of Crutchfield Hall. Closed for the season. When were these published? 2008, 2010, 2009. See? That's what I was reading. Those books and Goosebumps? I loved Goosebumps. I vividly remember there was one that scared me so bad. I remember the cover. She was like this skeleton ghost girl peeking up out of this water, out of like a lake. That one scared me so bad I had to sleep in my parents' room. I mean, I honestly... I didn't sleep in my own bed until I was like... 11 years old that's because i was scaring myself so bad with the types of books that i was reading as a child those are my credentials i do watch a lot of horror movies and i have just been exposing myself to horrific content from such an early age so but you can consider this video your starter guide to the horror genre well at least my take on the horror genre you know if you're one of those girlies who is completely new to the horror genre and you have no idea where to start you want to dip your little toes in or if you're already into horror and you just want to hear somebody else talk about it I'm here for that. I want to give you guys a little overview to the major categories of horror. I'll talk about some of my favorite horror books. And mixed in here, I'm going to be talking about some books that I have my eye on. Google defines horror as an intense feeling of fear, shock, or disgust. So by definition, a horror book can be any book that fears, shock, no, that's not right. Any book that shocks, disgusts, or invokes fear within the reader. But obviously all of those things are very, very, very subjective. Different people find different things shocking, disgusting, or fearful. You know, I, for example, find it disgusting when my shirts are too tight on my armpits. All of that being said, a horror book does not necessarily have to be something that you would think of as obviously or traditionally scary. Ghosts and bats and skeletons and Halloween time obviousness. Stories about human beings can be just as shocking and disgusting. But we'll get to that. Now categorizing and separating the horror genre can get a little tricky because there are so many different types, there are so many different elements, so many little branches that horror breaks off into. Is it paranormal? Are we dealing with ghosts and demons and things of that nature? Is it more psychological? Or you can get even more specific. Is it gothic? Are we dealing with body horror? And none of these things are mutually exclusive. One type can have bits and sprinkles of another type. They all kind of mix together in the end. But I don't want to get into two specifics for this video because like I said, this is supposed to be a simple little intro. Now when it comes to how I decided to separate horror, I kind of had to sit back a second and take a look at my bookshelf and think of all of my favorite horror books that I've read. I tried to take a look and think of some common themes, how everything fits together, which is literally basic categorization skills so i don't know why i'm explaining this but i pulled from the books that i have i thought about so many of the books that i have on my tbr and i grouped them together okay first up is what i feel like is probably the most obvious category and that is your paranormal your ghosts your goblins your demons your possessions monsters anything that involves a supernatural element horrific things may happen to the characters in these stories that may involve the elements of some of the other categories but the main perpetrator the villain of said things 
is some sort of supernatural being. I do have to say, and this was surprising to me, that this is not one of my favorite horror genres to read. When I was younger, this type of horror genre definitely scared me. Like those Mary Downing Hahn books, those are all ghost stories, goosebumps, etc. But I think as an adult now, you just kind of know those things aren't real, so they're less scary. They don't have the same effect. Maybe I just haven't come across any super great supernatural horror books. That's how I feel about it at the current moment. Like, I feel like it doesn't necessarily translate to the page that well. For me personally, I feel like anything supernatural or demonic just like goes better on screen or in a movie. Like, I love supernatural horror movies and like all of the conjuring movies the conjuring franchise but that feeling that i get from watching those types of movies doesn't necessarily translate to the books like i have not read a book that gave me those feelings so i don't really have any great recommendations for this specific category but if you do, if you have any supernatural type horror books that you love and think i should read or think other people should read let us know Next is what I would say is almost the exact opposite of paranormal or supernatural horror and that is literally just human slash physical horror for lack of a better term. This is where we might also get into thriller territory and when I think of those two genres, thriller and horror, I tend to think of them together. I usually will group them together even though they are technically two distinct genres. I think all horrors are thrillers but not all thrillers are horror. I also personally just gravitate towards thriller books that probably have more horror elements than normal and I may or may not end up mentioning some books that you might think of as more thriller than horror. But human slash physical horror is literally just human beings doing bad things to other human beings. There are no supernatural elements, there are no inhumane or spiritual characters slash beings. We've just got people doing bad things to other people. This is where I would put like serial killer storylines, anything true crime related, slashers. I think this genre relies specifically on body horror and the horrific things that can happen when certain things are done to the human body. So I would also say that these books tend to be on the more graphic side. Also anything that happens in these books could theoretically happen in real life. I would say that this is definitely one of my favorite types of horror and this is definitely the one that I probably do definitely the one that I prob like definitely probably those words don't go together. I believe I do the most reading from this category. We also have what I would call disorienting or fever dream horror and these are the types of books where you don't actually know what's going on. You can't tell what's happening in reality, the reality of the book, or if things are just happening in our character's head. Maybe we have an unreliable narrator, a character who is spiraling into insanity. Maybe the author is just purposefully trying to pull one over on us. The point is, you don't quite know what's going on, and depending on the book, you might be left with that feeling because the ending does not clarify. I think this genre of horror, and honestly this genre of book, this writing style in general, can be really hit or miss for some people, and it has to be done well in order for it to be a hit. I think Mona Awad is the perfect example for this type of writing. Her books feel like such a fever dream, like you are confused the entire way through but like in a good way. Bunny is one of my all-time favorite books. Rouge, also by her, also has such strongly disorienting vibes. Now these last two branches of horror are also polar opposites of each other. One of those is cozy horror and the other one is splatterpunk or extreme horror. If you are just starting to dabble with the horror genre, one of these is a great place to start. And the other one, you want to avoid like your mental well-being depends on it because it quite literally does. But I think a really good place to start if you do just want to ease yourself in, get a little taste, you don't want to traumatize yourself, would be cozy horror. And I would say cozy horror are horror books, I'm gonna say horror so much in this video, those are books where the horror aspects are dialed back probably to like 50%. The overall plot or storyline is horror, but it's not meant to be overly graphic. It's not going to paint pictures in your head that will be seared there for months. There may also be aspects of the storyline present in order to dilute the horror and the terror a little bit. There might be quite a good bit of comedy. There might be a romance involved. Anything else 
present in order to lighten the mood, lighten the vibes. Now I haven't really read a lot of cozy horror. That is definitely still a branch that I'm trying to explore because I do have a ton on my TBR. I know Darcy Coates and Rachel Harrison were two authors I saw mentioned nonstop every single time I looked up cozy horror. I have had Such Sharp Teeth and Black Sheep by Rachel Harrison on my TBR for such a long time. I think I came across both of those as I was just browsing in Barnes and so I added them to my Goodreads TBR. But I also heard she has another book called Cackle, which is about witches. I've heard that one's really good. Darcy Coates also has a ton of books. So if you do have a favorite of hers, please let me know. But I actually did find one of her books at Walmart the other day. This is Where He Can't Find You. This is about a girl named Abby. She lives in a small town where people have been disappearing and then they are later found dismembered but sewn back together with red thread. They call this killer the stitcher and her and her sister have all these rules that they live by in order to not be caught. However, the sister ends up going missing. So I guess she forgot the rules. But I'm very excited to start this one because there are also pictures. I love when books have pictures in them. Like it's almost like a graphic novel. It's not. It's a book but there's like little pieces of graphics. So yeah this will probably be my first Darcy Coates read. Some of the other authors I saw mentioned a lot when it came to cozy horror. Grady Hendrix and T. Kingfisher. I do have T. Kingfisher's duology on my TBR. It's What Moves the Dead and What Feasts at Night. I know that's a very popular little series. Grady Hendrix I've only read one of his books. I read the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires and I did like it, but I didn't love it. I also feel like there were some scenes in that one that were kind of graphic for what I would call cozy horror, but I do think his books tend to have more of a comedic premise. Like, I'm pretty sure he has one book where the setting is like an Ikea type store, and I love Ikea, so maybe I need to read that one. Now, the last category of horror I'm going to speak about is splatterpunk. If cozy horror is horror dialed to 50%, then think of splatterpunk as horror dialed to 500%. Think of the most insane, graphic, disturbing, heinous, shocking, horrific things that you can think of. That's what splatterpunk is. In my personal opinion, splatterpunk is stuff that is more shocking and disgusting than it is scary. I've only read a handful of splatterpunk books, but I have done a lot of research on them just out of plain morbid curiosity. When I first learned about splatterpunk slash extreme horror as a genre, I was so intrigued by it. I literally added so many of those books to my TBR, and then I read a couple of them. And I decided, hey, maybe we don't need to read a ton of these books. I feel like I can't even put into words the types of things that are in these books without outright saying what they're doing. Human beings doing the most depraved things. <sighs> these are the types of books where after you read them, you wish you could take like a wire scrub brush and scrub your brain really hard. Like the type of brush that you would use to clean a grill, scrubbing your brain with one of those. The types of books where honestly, you spend more time being shocked about how a human being thought about these things and then put them on a piece of paper and made them into a book rather than actually being scared. Some really popular books in this category are Anything by Aaron Beauregard. I have not read any of his books, but I have watched in-depth YouTube video summaries of them and I think I will be protecting my peace and not reading any of those. Cows is another one that's extremely popular. I read Womb by Duncan Ralston in one of my first ever videos. So if you do want a little bit more of a taste of what that's like, that is available to you free of charge, but it's also a pretty good representative of the types of stuff that I'm alluding to. There are a couple that I am still considering reading. I've heard Dead Inside by Chandler Morrison is actually pretty good as far as splatterpunk goes. It's about a night guard at a hospital and a maternity doctor who has a horrifically unusual appetite. So I can only imagine what that means. There's also True Crime by Samantha Kolisnik, I think, which is about a girl and her brother. They have an abusive mother, so they kill her and embark on a murder spree. Sibling bonding. But this says, as the murder tally rises, Susie's mental state spirals into irredeemable madness. Sounds fun. So yeah, if you do decide to pick up a splatterpunk book, first of all, God bless. Second of all, expect the goriest, most graphic, depraved, the deepest depths 
and recesses that the human psyche can go to. Expect that in the book, and I'm not being dramatic. I feel like that kind of sums up the major branches of horror. Obviously, you can get way more specific, you can get way more niche, you can start adding flavors on things like apocalyptic, futuristic, gothic, but we'll save that for another time. Now, moving on to some of my favorite horror reads, if you are a seasoned horror reader. These probably won't be anything new to you because most of them are very popular, but I think if you're getting into a new genre, it's okay to start with the most popular books because those books are popular for a reason and they're more often than not a good introduction to a genre. Also, a couple of these are not just my favorite horror books, they are some of my favorite books of all time. Probably the most popular recommendation I have in a book that in general I will tell everyone I meet to read is Bunny by Mona Awad. And yes, I know, I already briefly mentioned this, but I truly just love this book so much. This is about a girl who goes to a small liberal arts college. She's in the writing program, and there is this very interesting group of girls, also in this writing program, who all call each other Bunny. And our main character becomes involved with this group of girls. This, to me, is just so like girly pop. This is so girly pop horror. I would say the aesthetic that this book gives me is Melanie Martinez's Crybaby album, which do not get me started on that album. That specific piece of art is such a deep part of my lore, but that's what this book gives. Pink, girly, a little bit childish, but lurking underneath the surface, there is something so dark and deeply unsettling. Again, I would say that this is quintessential disorientation fever dream horror. It's not for everyone, but if you can vibe with that, you will vibe with this. Another super good disorienting read is I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid, and I have to mention this for the sole reason of how unsettled it made me. I personally would so much rather a horror book be subtle and unsettling rather than like in your face traditionally scary. Like if a book can unsettle me, give me the heebie-jeebies, that's what I find scary. This is about a couple. They're on their way to visit the boyfriend's parents for the first time. We're in the point of view of the girlfriend. She's kind of recounting their relationship thus far. But as you're reading, you start to realize that something's off. The vibes are not sitting right. This book was just so perfectly unsettling and disorienting. I was also reading this at night and had to stop myself and watch a Disney movie before I fell asleep because I was getting that scared, which that almost never happens to me anymore. Another super, super popular one I have is Tender is the Flesh. And odds are, if you watch a horror recommendations video, this book is gonna be mentioned. And I'm here to tell you, there's a reason for that. I think this is also one of my favorite books ever. Judge me if you want, yes, one of my favorite books is a book about cannibalism. There are just certain things I love in horror books that are gonna get me every time. Cannibalism, being set in the South, and cults. Those are gonna get me every single time. But this book takes place in a future where all animal meat has become inedible. I think it's from a virus or some sort of thing. I don't remember the exact reason why we can't eat animals anymore. The new norm is to eat human meat. And it is now so much far into the norm, like so much time has passed that they've developed this, they've gotten used to eating human meat, that humans are bred for consumption. There are processing plants and slaughterhouses for humans. Like they essentially just replace cattle. But our main character is a man who works at one of these plants and he becomes attached to one of the women who's going to slaughter. This book just, scratches an itch that I have, which that might be weird to say, but it's the truth. I could just see this becoming like a modern classic. I could see this being something that they have kids read in school, which would probably end up being a banned book, but I also did picture Pedro Pascal as the main character because this does take place in Argentina. And let me tell you, it only added to the reading experience. I also loved The Push by Ashley Audrain. Listen, horror books about children and also the elderly, they're gonna do it every single time. I'm not sure why it's the two ends of the spectrum, the young and the old, but they're scary. But our main character has a young daughter and as the daughter is growing up, our main character, the mother, starts to think, hey, my kid is kind of fucked up. She has trouble bonding with her daughter. Some things end up happening that makes the mother think that she probably has a mini psychopath on her hands. However, and this is the kicker, she's the only one that sees it. The husband thinks the daughter is perfectly fine. He's oblivious. And I have to say, that in and of itself is horrific. Like a woman witnessing something or witnessing events, believing something, but then nobody else around her believes her and they all end up gaslighting her and making her think she's insane. Why can't we gaslight men? 
I would say this leans more towards literary fiction because it does focus very heavily on the mother's internal thoughts and feelings, her struggle with motherhood, how she herself grew up. But towards the end, the horror, it comes back around, it comes full circle, it immediately reminds you of what you're reading. I would say that that's another category of horror that I really love, you know, literary fiction with elements of horror, with horror plot lines. But horror isn't necessarily the main focus of those types of books, so that's why I didn't really mention it in this video. The next recommendation I have is one that I've seen a lot of people classify as cozy horror and that is Slewfoot by Brahm. This is set in colonial New England so we are in our Puritan era. We are in our witch trials era. Our main character Abatha becomes a widow after her husband dies and because of this she becomes very ostracized from the rest of the people in the colony. They're trying to take advantage of her. They're trying to steal her land from her and she ends up encountering a dark spirit out in the forest who kind of helps her throughout this book. I really liked this. I think this is such a good read for around Halloween time. It's not graphic. It's not super scary. I just found it to be a really enjoyable story. There's also these really cool illustrations in the book, which I think are done by the author himself. So cool. This also kind of reminds me of The Witch, that A24 movie. So if you like those kinds of horror vibes, you'll like this. Also, it's a great female revenge story which I also love. Now I saved two of my absolute favorite favorites. I've been calling every book my favorite. That's the point of this. These are my favorite horror books, but these are two of my favorite favorite books. And if you choose to read any of my recommendations, it should be one of these. Like I said, I love southernish gothic backwoods horror and this book is literally the perfect example of all of those things. And I'm talking about The Devil All the Time by Donald Ray Pollock. Now it is set in Ohio and West Virginia, so not the South, but it does give those types of vibes. This follows a couple different storylines. It follows different groups of characters, but the storylines all end up coming together at the end of the book, which is literally one of my favorite types of plot ever. Like it just, it sits so right with me. But I think this takes place like from the mid 1900s, like host, World War II up into the 60s. It follows a man whose wife is dying of cancer and he himself is suffering from PTSD from the war. There's a husband-wife serial killer duo. There's a preacher who is spiraling into psychosis and in the middle of it all is like death and religion. It is just the dark underbelly of rural Christian America. Rural and horror. I'm going crazy. Very dark, very disturbing. I love it. Also, I know people have started to describe everything as Ethel Kane core, but this is the Ethel Kane aesthetic in a book. This book is Preacher's Daughter. Like the edits I have saved on TikTok of Preacher's Daughter and then movie scenes from this book because it's also a movie on Netflix, great movie. But those TikTok edits, immaculate. Mildred Carver, as good a Christian woman as ever there was in Coal Creek had prayed for her junior every day, but they'd still send him home in a box. The neighbor's brother came home in a box, but he wanted to go, so maybe it was his fault. There's your proof. Lastly, I have the one horror book that I would do anything to be able to read for the first time again, and that is Brother by Anya Alborn. The plot twists, multiple, had me gobsmacked, jaw dropped, bamboozled, hoodwinked. This is about a very dysfunctional family, to say the least. They're murderers and cannibals. Like it literally opens up with them hunting down a woman and killing her. But it's told from the point of view of one of the brothers and he doesn't exactly fit with this family. He doesn't like what they do. He's not a willing participant. He's basically forced to join in on their fun and games. But if you're into horror and you haven't read this book, you simply have to. The plot twists, and the revelations, as well as just like what is going on with this family is all so crazy. And like the ending, the ending literally played out like a movie, the entire book, just start to finish one of my favorite horror books. It is definitely on the more graphic side, but I think it's also really fast paced and like I said, reads like a movie. So I think it would also be a really good intro book. But those are all the recommendations that I wanted to mention for this video. I tried to pick one that represented each of the little categories the best, but if you have any horror books that you absolutely love that I didn't mention, I would love to hear about them. Also, would you guys be interested in a little summer ween reading vlog? You know, maybe Maybe a vlog where I read some of these horror books that I had on my TBR and we get a little dose of Halloween in these summer months. Let me know. But that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed. I really hope you decide to stick around and I'll see you in the next one.